Hello, and welcome to the watering hole. Thanks for checking out this clip. Don't forget to like and subscribe because that'll make the baby Jesus cry. And I know how much you guys love making the baby Jesus cry. Arizona abortion providers hope 1864 ban will spark change. A blue wave is coming. So this is bad news, but kind of hopeful. Um, so Arizona is, uh, you know, they, uh, they just passed some shit that made a law from 1864 go back into effect. Um, Arizona became a state in 1912, so they're now literally going back to a law that, ex that like, is from before they were even a state. Um, and interestingly, this is another thing that I learned from, uh, from, what's it called? Friend of the show, Opening Arguments, that's the podcast. Um is that the 1864 law, as with all of these abortion laws, was made specifically to protect men, not women. Um, like it, it, was, it was the male doctors who saw midwives who were performing abortions as encroaching on their business. So the reason behind this law was not to be like, oh, we need to protect the baby. It was a bunch of doctors being like, these women are getting in on our territory. Let's outlaw that so that they have to come to us for health care. So, um, yeah, that it's, it's fun how at the base of every anti-woman law is a man. <laughs> it's funny how that works. We're all bottoms. Anyway, um, in Arizona, the highest court reinstated an 1864 law that would ban almost all abortions and send abortion providers to prison for up to five years. Uh, Yay! Imagine going to prison for performing a well-known, well-documented, and long-done medical intervention. So, they interviewed Dr. Ronald Yunus, who is an obstetrician and gynecologist who owns the Women's Center that they talked about earlier in some color in the beginning. Where it was like, oh, they were sitting in the waiting room watching such and such a show. Like, yeah, whatever, I don't need that. But um, he's, he's the guy that owns the clinic that they were talking about. Um, he says, yes, the 1864 law is jeopardizing abortion access in the state, but he, like some other providers, believe it will eventually lead to abortion being enshrined into the state's constitution, which that's also happening in Florida, where they have, um, I think it's Article 4 on the mm -hmm. ballot, is um, to add abortion protections to the constitution. And basically, like, it drew the line pretty much the same place that Roe did. Um, and, like, even after... Like, I think it's 24 weeks for that one. And even after that, there's still exceptions for like the health of the mother. So yeah, like, yeah, that would be a good amendment for Florida to have. And it has a really good chance of passing because like, last time it was pulled, it was, uh, there it was something like, um, 20% of Floridians were against it and they need the 60% to pass it. So yeah, every time abortion has been on the ballot, it wins or but, like access to abortion wins. So this is a really good way for Republicans to lose power. And so hopefully they just do. And then they make it a federal thing and we don't need I mean, to have this fight again. Republicans generally have been like a dog who catches a car with mm -hmm. the abortion thing. Congratulations. You got the thing yeah. you've been campaigning for. But then and it, now it's not a campaign promise you can make anymore. But then it is a valid criticism of the Democratic Party that they have had plenty of opportunity to enshrine it in federal law, but have not. So, like, that's a valid criticism. It's not a reason to not vote for Joe Biden in the election. Remember, if you want to send a message, vote as progressive as possible in the primaries and then just suck it up and vote for the guy who's not Republican in the general. That's how you make progress without, like, doing government overthrows and shit. And Socrates says at this point, I think the Republican Party is dying, is a dying party. I don't think so they because math mathematically... It's going to be impossible for them to be a dying party because we are we are down to the point where there are two parties in the United States. We once had more. I feel uh, like I don't know. I feel like the Republicans are on the verge of a split and there's going to be the MAGA party and then the classic Republicans and then the de Democrats. I feel then they'll then that will be a split for one election cycle. And then I, it, it I don't know. So the have you have you ever seen the channel CGP Gray? Yeah. Okay. So have you seen the video he did on political parties? Probably. How long ago was the, it? Uh, this was like three years ago. Then probably, yes. I, I think I've seen most of his stuff. 
Okay, so the 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 long and short of it for people in chat who might not have seen it is that if you have the voting system that we have in America, then it is always inevitable to end up in a two party system. Mm. Our our voting structure can't not end up in one. Well, so rank choice voting. Let's get some rank choice in there. That that would allow us to have more parties. But with our system, with the first past the post system that we have right now, and after this, I have to go grab my pizza. Um, even if you have a split in the Republican Party, the one of the parties will become the dominant, and then the other one will eventually fade out of relevance, and one will eventually have to become a bigger tent, because that's what happened when the Whigs lost their power to the Democrats early on, yeah. and the Republican Party was even formed in the first place. This splitting and then big tenting is the natural progression of a first-past-the-post system. It always ends up this way. Yeah. Um, so I got to read this before it goes away in the chat, but uh, Rosina sent a super chat says reminder C-sections are abortions as they terminate a pregnancy. I feel like that doesn't count for the definitions of abortion that are usually used to outlaw it. Yep. I All see right, your right point. Back. The pizza is finished. I see your point, Rosina, but I don't think that that counts for now. Eunice is determined to keep performing abortions, which take up to uh, which take up about half of his practice, at least until June, when the law will is slated to take effect. Um, and uh, notably, this abortion provider is a conservative, and uh, he used to vote Republican, but now he calls them idiots who refuse to shut their mouths about abortion. So, like, well, they banged the drums about it for years. Yeah, it's all they could do. We need to save the babies. Why? So that you can get more uneducated voters? Shut up! Yeah. And um, now, like, some Republicans are actually, like, realizing that it's a losing issue, so are not getting on board with it. And uh, they're saying it would take only a few Republicans to join forces with the Democrats to knock, knock the ancient statute down, the Arizona Republic reports, and lawmakers could start the process to repeal the law as early as Wednesday. So, like, that'd be nice if they could repeal this law from the 1800s on regulating <laughs> women's bodies. Uh, Rosina says, do you think a new conservative party would actually survive in the U.S. now? Um, yeah, I think they'd have a good chance. Cause there, there's a good number of Republicans who vote Republican because they feel like they have to vote Republican. Um, but they, they fucking, they fucking hate way. the MAGA side of it. Like, yeah, no, they feel disenfranchised because like the idiots like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert are making so much noise that that's what people associate with Republicans right now. So they're embarrassed to call themselves Republicans, but they don't have the same, they don't have views that work with Democrats. So they mm. would prefer to vote Republican, but they don't want to vote for those idiots. So yeah, I think if a more reasonable conservative branch of the Republican party came out, or if they actually split and you had three parties, I think um, now, first off that would crush the, like that would that would cause the Democrats to like win by a massive landslide if they split the Republican Party like that, um, which would be great. Um, but the thing is, when you when you pull the general population, the Democrats always win. Mm -hmm. When voter turnout is high, Democrats win. On the issues that the Democrats stand for versus the Republicans. The Democrats always win when you look at the whole popul the population as a whole. So if they split the Republican Party like that and the Democrats win by a fucking landslide. Then I could see it be like the Republicans wouldn't get back into power for like a decade or two. I could easily see that happening. And I hope that something like that happens. And I also I, I just as much hope that the Democrats don't get complacent with that and be like, oh, yeah, no, we win no matter what. So we don't need to actually do anything. Because I could absolutely see that happening with the establishment garbage that's going on now. It's like, I, I I very vocally suggest that people vote for Joe Biden in November because we know he's going to be the Democratic candidate. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean I like the guy. We accept that he's here. Yeah. So, like, in that situation, like, like on the one hand, I kind of want the Republican Party to be not not strong, but like strong enough to actually present a challenge so that the Democrats have to actually do shit to get people to vote for them. As but, opposed um, to just not being Republicans. But yeah, I feel like the Republican Party is like if, if they suffer a split like that, they're done. 
for at least a couple decades until they get their shit back together. Paige Wilder says five bucks says the Democrats fumbled the ball if they win big in 2024. I could agree with that. Yeah. And Ryan Hall says Democrats need to be better. Stop focusing so much on just getting votes and being in power. Yeah. Actually make our country better. Yeah, I absolutely. I agree. And in 2016, everybody hates Hillary, but even she can beat Trump. Yeah. Um, Hillary actually funded some of Trump's campaign in the uh, early bit of that election, specifically because she wanted to run against him because he's a crazy person that she felt like she could beat. And mm -hmm. she absolutely should have beaten him, but um, she didn't. And so, like, that's that's the kind of mindset that I feel like the Democrats have. But like, and like I and so this is why I say vote as progressive as possible in the primaries, because that actually send that successfully sends the message like Joe Biden has altered his stance on Israel. Like he is he went from supporting Israel wholeheartedly and whatever the fuck they want to do to I am very heavily pressuring Israel to agree to a ceasefire because he saw what happened in Michigan. I think it was Michigan. I might be wrong on that, but um, and he wants he wants to keep his votes, and the yeah. only way to keep his votes so is he, by doing that. Because people voted progressive, because people went out and voted for not Joe Biden but still Democrat, and it was very no. I think they voted no contest. So they very explicitly they went out and said we're like we are doing this because we don't agree with your stance on Israel. He changed his stance on Israel to become more progressive. It's still not good enough. I'm not defending his current position, but it's better than it was because people went out and did that in the primary. So that is how you put pressure on these old white, boring politicians who don't want to change shit to actually change shit. But like when it comes down to it in November, you need to vote for not Trump. Because Trump will like, yeah, Joe Biden will not change shit for the better as quickly as we would like, but Trump will actively change shit for the worse and make it so much fucking harder to do anything for the better in the future. So like Biden hasn't yet smoked bomb a church. <laughs> Trump not, has. not in the States, at least. Not in the States, at least. And yeah, those weren't we're not... smoke bombs in other countries. <laughs> no, they were they were bomb bombs. Yeah. Although Biden did do less of that than Trump did, too. So there's that. I'm glad that we can at least have fewer drone strikes per president as time goes on. Yeah. Less than Lucid says vote Cthulhu, the greatest of evils. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Anyway, even if the law is stricken from the books, uh, abortion providers in Arizona face deep uncertainty. There's nothing preventing the passage of more anti-abortion measures in the future. And in the state house where election denying GOP lawmakers recently spoke in tongues with his anti-abortion prayer team. Did you see that? I thought about covering that last week. It no, was, I didn't was, see that. It was fucking nuts. They were like praying in tongues to open their legislative session in Arizona. It was fucking nuts. Jesus Christ. Like that, that is shit that like they freak out. When a humanist gets up and is like, in the name of providing the best good to as many people as possible, let us do our jobs. And they freak the fuck out because that's religious discrimination against Christians somehow. Meanwhile, yeah. they get up there and like pray in tongues to open their sessions. Like, could you imagine if a Satanist got up there and did something the equivalent? They like Mark Driscoll, Pastor Mark Driscoll. He's on Twitter right now complaining about the satanic display at the mega church because there was a, a, a sword swallower act that they hired where like he took off his shirt and swallowed a sword. He's like, that's like a stripper. It's the spirit of Jezebel. Jesus it's evil. Christ. Yeah, that's that's his whole thing right now. So like could and like just imagine if a Satanist got up there and started speaking in tongues in the same way they did. They would be freaking the fuck out. Yeah, because they don't associate it with the the god that they worship. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. If you speak in tongues, you're either lying or deluded. Uh, that is one of those most are deluded. Is, I think that is one of those practices <laughs> that I am. A, I can say with a hundred percent confidence. The the guy who um, the guy who checked his cell phone while he was speaking in tongues is probably lying, but. Most I would say are deluded. Just in there, ah, she must is deluded, and then he's just like staring uh, at Twitter the entire time. He sounded like he was taking a difficult shit. <laughs> 
Yes, Lord, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. Uh, 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 anyway, Arizona's attorney general uh, has assured providers that they will not be prosecuted for performing abortions as long as she's in office, which is good, but like, there's nothing guaranteeing that she's going to be in office forever. And there's a seven year statute of limitations on stuff like this. So like, there's a very good chance that she's not going to be in office. And if she's replaced with a Republican who's anti-abortion, they can come after them for things that happened under her watch. So yay, that's garbage. Um, again, just a reminder, this is an 1864 law, a, a, a law from when was the civil war? It was like 1867. Wasn't it that it ended? I, you know, I want to believe that those are the years that it happened, but I've, this is I keep like hearing from Tim Pool like, that it was last week. This is like sometime around, okay, American Civil War. Not the movie. Um, so it's 1861 to 1865. So this law yeah. is from the time of the Civil War. Back when doctors, like it was doctors that were pushing for this. To be a doctor in 1864, you didn't have access to anesthetics. You had laudanum, so it was like an opiate, and that was basically it. But like, you couldn't mm -hmm. put someone under for surgery. If uh, if a soldier got shot in the arm, they would just chop off the arm as a precautionary measure because they didn't have antiseptics, and it was probably going to get gra gangrenous. Mm -hmm. Um, like yeah, no. It, it, uh, Ryan Hall is saying dentists were doctors, barbers were doctors. Like they weren't actual doctors, but like if you were in a small town out in the middle of nowhere and you got sick, you would go to your barber and he would slice your arm so that you could bleed. You know that uh that scene in Puss in Boots where he dies, comes back, and the 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 dentist barber therapist person is sitting there going, It's my professional opinion, you should take it easy. That's my opinion as a doctor. Uh, my opinion as your friend or as as your barber, however, like <laughs> So that you, that you, unironically you was what happened. Yeah. Atlas and Lucy says barber surgeon. Yeah. And they, and a lot of the barbers, like, like germ theory was still new back then. So like a lot of these barber surgeons didn't know that they should probably sanitize the knives that they're this, like the things they were using to cut people's hair and shave people's beards before using them to cut into people's skin to make them bleed. So like, that's the state, that's the state of water. medical science when this law was passed that is regulating how women get their medical care. When did we stop washing in still water? I'm actually curious now. It was in the 1800s, but it, like, it depends on where you were. If you're like out on the frontier where you don't have access to anything and your barber is your doctor, 1864, yeah, you're still washing your hands in still water. But um, like the doctors in the big cities or whatever would have known better by then. At least took, that is what it, the 90s TV show Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman has led me to believe. <laughs> it took till 1875 for modern sterilization practices and scrubbing of hands to mm -hmm. be widely practiced. Yep. Okay. Um, That's yeah, and then, scary. And then antiseptics like uh, like alcohol, like not, not the kind that I'm drinking, but like the kind that makes you go blind. Uh, wasn't until like World War I that that started being used in medical practice. Um, like, yeah, no, th this is, it's, it's barbaric, the type of medicine Tight that was being practiced when this law was in effect. Titan Uranus says, what is still water? So it used to be that there, there was a washing station in houses and in facilities and the washing station typically comprised just a of, bowl of water. A, it was, yeah, it was a, or usually a bucket. Yeah. If you were, if you were like royalty, you might have a bowl, but a lot of times it was just a bucket because that was readily available and mm -hmm. you would just wash in the station and then you'd change out the water at the end of the night. So this was a practice that doctors would use as well because people didn't yet know that still water garners contaminants, not just the contaminants that you wash your hands in, but like the air around has microorganisms. Mm hmm that will contaminate still water. It's the reason why when you, um, there's a video of a dude like taking a cup and dipping it in glacier water and then just taking a drink directly and everybody in, like looking at the videos, freaking out going, that's 
that's just still water. It looks clear because it's out in near a glacier, but that doesn't mean that you should not use iodine or not boil it or not do something to sterilize yeah. that water first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so Cary Lake, the Arizona Senate candidate, once ballyhooed. Let's, let's use the word ballyhooed more often in our news reporting, shall we? So it's like That's a word we don't see very often. Um, she ballyhooed the 1864 law, meaning she supported it. But uh, now she is uh, behind the Democratic rival in her race. Um, and she's decided that uh, as part of her strategy, um, she has decided to uh, say like, oh, no, this law is actually not good. It's out of step with Arizonans. Um, so hopefully that's too little too late because like we all know that Carrie Lake is not going to give abortion protections if you elect her um, mm. cuz she she's a piece of shit um but yeah so when polled in 2022 only 28% of voters in Arizona approved of the 1864 law that actually seems freaking high to me 28% like that's almost almost a third of Arizonans were in favor of this law i mean that's obviously not going to uh, win elections with those kind of percentages but that still seems abnormally high for like yeah we approve of a medical law passed in 1864 but uh, oh, yeah. anyway, amid the uncertainty abortion providers say they're hanging their hopes on what's become an increasingly effective way to undo bills passed by republican legislatures uh, which is relying on voters to enshrine abortion rights into state constitutions via ballot measures because abortion access to abortion always wins at the ballot. Always. Um, Senshini says, stop at stream elements, send is not food, um, which is, that's that's a bot that I set up because I have a treat stream thing where you can actually like send me a burger from Wendy's, which is I think the only thing that I set up on it. Because like I did it as a, oh, it would be neat if somebody did this sometime thing. And then I forgot about it and I never talk about it. So nobody has ever done it yet. And it's probably for the best because like every time I start a stream, I remember that that's a thing and I'm like, Oh, I don't feel like eating that right now. What if somebody sends that to me? That would be annoying. <laughs> but then I remember that nobody has ever done it. So that's not a risk that I have to, and then I don't bother to update the bot to take it off. So <laughs> anyway, that's unrelated, whatever. Um, so in the wake of the decision to reinstate the 1864 law, a popular ballot measure giving Arizona voters the chance to add abortion rights to the state constitution in November is gaining momentum, even as Republicans strategize the measure's defeat. Rosina, welcome to basic. You basic, Rosina. Rhino suddenly gets 20 hamburgers sent to him. I hope not. Because that's the, the one burger that I set up there is the Baconator, which is a really fucking good burger, but like... Uh, no. <laughs> you know, it's weird. I used to like Baconators a lot, and I don't... You are green now, Rosina. I don't really go for them anymore. Maybe it's because I live, like, relatively close to a Wendy's. But I don't know. Something about them just doesn't taste right anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Wendy's... I, I don't know if this is in the States as well, but the Wendy's in Canada have uh, a, an onion burger now, which is actually really good. It would be better if there was bacon on it. <clears throat> but um, I just love bacon. What can I say? Bacon is amazing. It's true. Oh, feed Rhino's entire family out of spite just for him telling us not to. Okay, if, if a bunch of you send me Baconators on this thing... Um, I th Okay, first off, I think I remembered to set up the cooldown on that one. So, like, I can only get, like, one every hour or so. But if I get a bunch, then, uh, yeah, I know what the kids are taking for their school lunches tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah, so Isaacson, a longtime abortion provider, says his medical group will continue offering services until we can't. Uh, he worries he might have to shut down for several months before the election brings more clarity about the future. If he shuts down, he will still have to pay rent and bills for leased equipment in his office. And worse, there may be painful layoffs of, a, of the small staff that he calls his second family. So by restricting abortion, you're hurting working people. Um, and he says now they're taking steps back from the chaos and trying to figure out the best way to move forward in the short term. Uh, Dr. Gabriel Goodrick, um, 
who owns the clinic that provides a third of the state's abortions, says that she was holding... I, I love this picture here. We need to do more of this, like, propagandistic type of stuff. She was like, okay. I was holding foster kittens in my lap when I learned of the court's decision to revive the 1864 law. Because, like, Republicans... Oh, like, my God. The, the anti-abortion people, they think of people who are pro light or pro-choice, rather, as um, being, like, a bunch of baby killers who, like, are plotting in back rooms to sell organs on the black market to make lots of money for their abortions or whatever so I mean, like i am aren't you shh we're not supposed to admit to that Soros. come on george soros isn't going to send you a check if you keep admitting that out loud i his payments have been really scant lately if, if at all um but yeah the, so so i, so I kind of like that they're like they're, they're kind of combating that like back alley dealing in harvested organs thing with like i was sitting there cuddling my kittens when i heard about this horrible news but um, meanwhile you're gonna have some republican propagandist counter that by going look liberals are all lonely cat ladies there are there are fucking billboards in my area for from anti-abortion groups that talk about how like Oh, a baby sucks its thumb from nine weeks after conception in the womb. And I suspected that was bullshit, so I looked it up. They don't have digits at nine weeks after conception. How can they suck their thumb? They don't have a thumb. It's a, it's, a, it's a little pseudopod at the end of his little thing. <clears throat> like, it's, it's not even a hand yet, but they're sucking their thumb. Sure, what the fuck ever. <laughs> hey, come on. They just, they just lie so blatantly. But um, yeah, good... I know people aren't going to fact check them. So Goodrick vows that the clinic will not close its doors. In the worst case scenario, she envisions it staying open to help women get to other states for abortions and provide legal reproductive health care uh, to uh, women in Arizona. Um, yeah, let's hope Arizona doesn't pass one of those bills that Texas passed, where it's like bounty hunting, like, oh, you helped someone get an abortion out of state? Let's all sue you for $10,000 and as many people as possible can sue them whatever i don't know it's it's bullshit anyway jesus yeah no that's that's basically all i wanted to say on this one so it, it's a bunch of bullshit